Hi everybody, I am Net Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about a comprehensive metabolic panel. So let's get into it. So the first thing I wanted to mention is this does have other names. So it's called a comprehensive metabolic panel or a CMP for short. Some places might also refer to it as a Chem 14 or a chemistry panel. So I just wanted to point out that all of these different names are referring to the same test. So what is it used for? It can be used for three different things. Diagnosis, as a screening tool, or as a monitoring tool. So it can be used to diagnose after the patient presents with symptoms. So remember, as nurses, the big part of what we do is assessment. And our assessment data is both subjective and objective. So the symptoms that the patient reports are the subjective information. And then a lab, like a CMP, is objective data that we can use to help determine what's going on with the patient. For screening purposes, for some people, a CMP is just part of their routine checkup, their routine physical exam. Not everybody gets this done during their annual physical, but if you have like a chronic condition, you are more likely to have a CMP done. And this is used before symptoms occur. So with this one, you have symptoms and we're going to do it to kind of figure out what's going on with you. With the screening tool, we're going to do it before symptoms appear to see if we can catch something before that happens. And then for monitoring, so we can use monitoring for a couple of different things. So if you have increased or decreased results, and then we do some sort of treatment to get those levels back to normal, we're going to take a follow-up CMP to respond after treatment. So how did the body respond? We can use it to look for medication side effects. And then, not commonly used for this, but can be used for routine blood sugar monitoring. So if you're a person who has diabetes and needs to be checked routinely in a clinic setting or at your doctor's office, they might be doing a CMP for routine blood sugar. A comprehensive metabolic panel tests for 14 different things. So this is the first seven, and then I'll talk about the next seven. Typically, when we get a CMP done, we are checking for things that affect the liver and the kidneys. So a couple of these things that we're looking for. First is glucose. We know glucose, right? It's the sugar that we use for energy. Calcium. Calcium is very important to have in our body. We need it um, for our heart. We need it for our muscles and for our nervous system to work properly. Sodium also affects muscle and nerve function. It can affect our acid-base balance and helps regulate our blood pressure. Potassium is needed to have a regular heart rate, muscle contraction, and it helps nutrients go into cells and waste go out of cells. Bicarbonate reflects the amount of CO2 in our blood, so again with that acid base. Chloride balances fluids, regulates our blood pressure, aids in muscle contraction, and aids in digestion. And then albumin, albumin you might have heard of before as a protein. So what albumin does is it prevents fluid from leaking out of the blood vessels and going into our tissues. It's also a carrier, so it carries things like hormones, vitamins, and enzymes throughout the body. So all of these things are very important and we need them to be in a normal, safe range. Some other things that a CMP looks for. First, we're going to look at your BUN and your creatinine. So your BUN and your creatinine tell us a lot about the functioning of your kidneys and are they working well. So the BUN measures urea nitrogen, which is just a waste product um, from the blood and it gets filtered out through the kidneys when the kidneys are functioning normally. Creatinine is also a waste product, so it is a byproduct of just normal muscle activity, um, also removed by the kidneys. So if the kidneys are not working well, we're going to see these levels increase. That's a sign that there's a problem with the kidneys. I actually have a whole nother video on BUN and creatinine. I'll link it below if you want to check that out. The total protein, 
So this is just the sum of the albumin plus the globulins. So that's the total protein, those two together. Your ALP, ALT, and AST, these are all liver enzymes. So your ALP is an enzyme that aids in digestion and helps protect, you know, like the normal bacteria in your gut. Your ALT and your AST, if those are elevated, can show signs of liver damage. Bilirubin is another waste product. This is formed after old red blood cells have been broken down by the liver. So if you have very high levels of bilirubin, then that is also indicative that there might be a problem with the liver. The liver is not functioning properly. And a patient with a high bilirubin will also present with jaundice. When it comes to the results of the test, a lot of things can affect those. So I just wanted to point that out. So results can vary based on the age of the patient, the gender of the patient, their health history, any medications that they're on, your hormone level at the time of the test, did you eat something or exercise prior to the test, are you pregnant or dehydrated, all of these factors can influence these test results. So I want you to keep that in mind. I also want you to keep in mind that depending on where you get this test done, the normals can vary. So different laboratory settings, different clinic settings, hospital settings, they might have slight variations in what is considered normal range. So I did put kind of the most commonly accepted normal ranges, but just know where you're working or where you've gotten your test done might be slightly different. So albumin is 3.5 to 5.4, your ALP 20 to 30, AST 7 to 55, ALT 8 to 48, your BUN 60 to 20, calcium 8.5 to 10.3, bicarb 22 to 29, chloride 96 to 106, creatinine 0 0.6 to 1.2, Glucose in a non-diabetic is 70 to 100. Potassium, 3.5 to 5. Sodium, 135 to 145. Bilirubin is 0 0.1 to 1.2. And then total protein, 6 to 8.3. So these are some commonly accepted normal ranges for these tests. So that was my video on Comprehensive Metabolic Panel. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.